Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps it's your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for our nation and our leaders. We want to pray for our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. Father, we thank you for the abundance of all things. We pray for the influence of your word and your spirit upon the direction of this nation and those that are in leadership positions. Father, we also pray for our local community and region that you will continue to open up doors of utterance. And Father, we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We ask that you open up the windows of heaven, pour out your virtue, your power, and your presence. And Father, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world and pray that you provide them with a hedge of protection around each and every one of them. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. Well, we have just completed an incredible weekend here um, at Cornerstone. We had our annual uh, church family camp, which we have renamed our uh, family camp meeting. And then yesterday in our uh, Sunday service, we had by the Cody Marks with us. And so it was just, it was taken as, a, as an entire package. This weekend was just absolutely incredible. There are so many wonderful and glorious things that God did uh, beginning on Thursday all the way till uh, yesterday. Uh, more more than, than we have time to enumerate and, and get into. But I want to talk about um, hanging on to the victory and hanging on to spiritual things that God does in your life. And uniquely, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the parable of the sower and the seed. Okay, the sower and the seed. And we're going to go through these different soil conditions uh, pretty quickly here because most of you are familiar with this. But we're going to go to Luke chapter number 8 and we're going to start in verse number 5. A sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground. Now I want to I want to go down to verse number fifteen and talk about this good ground. But that on the good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. And so I simply want to entitle this this morning, Kept, Kept. Um, as I've already mentioned, we had a supernatural weekend here. Um, there were things that happened in yesterday's service with the incredible uh, ministry of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, but the marks was wonderfully used of God yesterday. But there were things that happened that was cemented or, or galvanized or forever established some things that these last three services that we had with Brother Marks, um, one could easily tell that this wasn't just a series of good meetings or a series where there was good preaching. And I don't mean to minimize any of that. Please don't, don't take that wrong. But there was such specific supernatural direction and such specific things that were said, things that were spoken, things that were determined 
over this last weekend that it makes this particular devotional absolutely critical. And the reason why I say that is, is that if, if we are not careful, we can, we can get something on the mountaintop only to have it become lost when we go to, when we begin to move to another altitude, another evolution, uh, elevation of, of, of normal daily living. And so I want to talk to us about some ways in which you can keep that which God has done. Notice with me in these different soil conditions that it is, once again, you're, you're well aware of this, it is the interaction with the word. The wayside, there's no interaction. It, it's very casual. It's very careless. It's, it's where an individual is just not even considering uh, the importance and the relevance of the seed, so therefore it is lost. We would only like to take note of the fact that there are demonic forces that are there to remove the, the word that is giving because it has such potential it has such potential. And then in number two, uh, the, second, the second soil condition, it's on a rock. Um, it receives the word with joy, but there's no, there's no soil. There's no way for it to germinate. There's no way for it to, to have any kind of rootage, to be rooted and grounded. And in time of temptation, um, it doesn't, there's nothing there. It's gone. Number three, um, the heart of the person's life is filled with other things, weeds, um, and the word is lost and, and cannot germinate because it has to compete with other things that are, that, are, that are littering the ground or littering a person's life. And the word of God is not able, once again, to germinate and then to spring forth. But in this last condition, which is really, which is really where we are, because if you've made it this far and you've, you've, you, you were in this, this camp meeting weekend that we experienced, you already know that there were things that were given directly to you by the Holy Ghost and by the Word of God. And those things can only be kept when we take care of the condition of our heart. Once again, let's look at verse number 15 in Luke 8. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and a good heart. There's already been there's already been some excavation in the inner man. There's already been some preparation. There's already been some cultivation to in a person's life where they've already seen the benefits of of employing the will of God, the word of God, and the ways of God in an individual's life. It's cleared some of the heart. And so you already understand and comprehend uh, the power of receiving the word of God and protecting that, protecting it from the fowls, protecting it from uh, the raw sunlight and, and all of the atmospheric conditions of life and protecting it from the weeds and, and, and rootage that shouldn't be there. You've already experienced that. But look at this. Having heard the word, keep it keep it. If you, if you personally received something this weekend, ultimately you're going to have to fight for it. You're either going to have to uh, come to grips with that within yourself and say, this is something that is so important to me and so valuable to me that I am willing to do whatever I have to do in my life personally. Now that I would say that this is the very first this is the first dimension that has to be dealt with, and it's dealing with your carnality. However, I have found in my own personal life that when I am hungering for something that, that I'm looking for in God, and God addresses that, that this is, this is a quick decision. It's a quick choice. It is, a, it is an adjustment, an alteration, um, a, a, an adjustment that you make that automatically facilitates that. And that, I would venture to say that's probably where most people are that are viewing this devotional this morning. You got it. You got a hold of it. It's now yours. You've already, you've already absorbed it. There is a level of absorption that has to take place here 
in a person that has a good and an honest heart. I'm not saying it's all good. In fact, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number nine, tells us who can know it, who can know the condition of the heart. Uh, only God can. But what I do know and what I am aware of and what I am in charge of as an individual, I want more of God. And when I get that, I immediately inculcate that. I immediately absorb that. And I say, that is mine. What was given to me over the over these last three or four days, it's now mine. I've been on I've been on the lookout for this. I've been wanting this. I've been desiring this. I've been hungering for this. And so in this in this very first dimension, we'll just talk about we'll call it a dimension because it deals with the carnal man, and there has to be uh, there has to be uh, some dialogue there and some decision making there. But I got what I wanted. I want more. But I'm holding on to what I got. Secondly will be the devil. The devil understands these dark spiritual forces that watch us. They study us. They, they've, they've known our, they're familiar with our failures. They're familiar with our successes. They want to rob you and I of the great nutrition and the potentiality of what we have received. Here's how you deal with that. Not only do you embrace that and say, that's mine, put it into action, put it into your, your, your paradigm of daily living. Let it affect you immediately and permanently. It's not, this is going beyond the very first uh, dimension where we say that was for me and I'm keeping, I'm, I'm hanging on to this. I've been looking for that. This is taking this to another level. This is saying, you know what? We're going to put roots down. This is going to become permanent. If I got to make any changes, I'm doing it now. If I've, if whatever I've got to do for it to influence my thinking, my attitude, my direction, the way I go about things, I'm making that permanent and we're doing it right now. That is the safest way that I know of, of taking what you have received and keeping it and making it permanent is to make those adjustments immediately permanently and keep moving forward in Jesus name. I'm reminded of a place in the scripture where Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, incredible passage of scripture. Nehemiah is at the top of the list of my favorite biblical heroes because he never heard uh, a word from God. It was, a, it was an understanding that he gained directly from the scriptures. He was motivated for God's people. He was motivated for God. He was motivated for Israel. He was motivated for Jerusalem. And he was motivated to rebuild the wall, to offer protection for God's people. And it got to the place where they had an implement of labor in one hand, which was a trowel, and they had a sword in the other. The point I'm trying to make about Nehemiah in this particular setting is this. You got to keep working. You have to keep, you have to keep living. You have to keep making a living. You have to keep relating. You have to keep, uh, you're spanning two different dimensions. You're, you're, you're working, you're, you're providing for your family, you're raising children, etc., etc. But on the other hand, you have a sword and you're able to multitask. To people, to people that take the word and take the supernatural that is given to them, you have to learn to multitask. You have to learn to pray. You have to learn to fast. You have to learn to communicate. You have to learn to uh, place all these things into your heart and make them part of your epistemology, your behavior, your speech, your thought life. And yet you're still functioning in this world. So multitasking is a huge, huge thing in bringing these things to pass to where they become part of our spiritual nature. This has been an incredible weekend, all of Cornerstone. You did a fabulous job to those of you that helped facilitate this and were part of the logistical uh, part of this. We have brother and sister Earls and the musicians and the singers and people that were in charge of various areas. You did a fabulous job and we appreciate you so very much.
God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.